Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Open Mic Night live at the Zoom Bar DC. We've got a great lineup tonight. We've got Dave Sherman, Scott Kaplowitz, Blake Wilson, Reggie Stout, Ed Crowley, Braden Eddy, Tom Mann, Warren Hayford, Estrella Valencia. And it's going to be wow. awesome. So stick around. And well, Dave Sherman's going to kick us off. All right. Well, we've got a full house tonight again. Uh, I guess I'll do one of your favorites to start with. I'm a bad boy in your town alone I'm a bad boy in your town alone I ain't got nobody I can call my own I'm a bad Long, long way from home. I'm a bad boy. Long, long way from home. I ain't got nobody I can call my own. Next time I travel, I'll keep you by my side. Next time I travel, I'll keep you by my side. Then I won't have to worry, everything gonna be all right. Go, Pops. Go, man. Go. Go, man. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Uh, this next tune is a tune I wrote um, years and years ago. Uh, I, I tended, this is a tune I always do with a band, so I, I tried to come up with a, a way of doing this solo that at least made sense and would hold together. So, anyway, here it goes. Okay, I'm trying to remember. Uh, hold on. I might have to do something different because I just forgot the words of my own song. Uh, It'll be cool. This I, is, got, I got cool it. I got it. Part of the song. It used to happen to the Beatles all the time. Well, my baby tried to make me something that I'm not. Try my best to please her, but there's something she forgot that it's just not me. But it's just not me. But it's just not me to change because of you wanted to. Well, she tried to change my car, she tried to change my clothes. I said, Look at here now, baby, this change has got to go, but it's just not me. But it's just not me But it's just not me To change because of you want me to But it's just not me It's just not me 
But it's just not me But it's just not me But it's just not me To change because of you want me to Well now all the king's horses And all the king's men Try to put it back together Now that it had to win But it's just not me But it's just not me But it's just not me to change because of you want me to. But it's just not me. 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 But it's just not me to change because of you want me to. Go pops. Thank you. Oh, man. Thanks, Dave. That was awesome. Great lyrics. Um, Braden, do you want to go next? The rock, another rock and background here. It looks like he's at Watkins Park uh, Festival of Lights. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, you guys sound so light. amazing. I feel like I have to give him like a food Parks donation Flanders. or something. <laughs> I could use a food donation. <laughs> <laughs> Looks cool. This uh, is probably going to be my last performance for a couple of weeks. I am getting uh, my wisdom teeth out tomorrow morning. So, a little yeah. nervous about it. Good luck. You going under or getting local? Going under. 10 15. I'm I have local, so I cannot provide any reassurance. I'm sorry. But my brother had the full anesthesia, and he's still here and mostly okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good news. Um, your your mic is a little crackly, by the way. A little crackly? Is that better? I don't know if it's his mic because I'm hearing you pretty crackly too, Scott. Okay, it might be me. Hold on. I'm going to leave the call and come back. Well, I'm hearing both of you, so I don't know. It's just a connection thing. There's a. There's a. Cold outside. Yeah. Uh, the first tune I'm going to do is an original I wrote. It's called Spiraling, and it's kind of. Um, just about spiraling out of control and trying to take that control back in your life. To explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. between my lies 
forever lost in the snow man and night stars and leaves out of control to the gate to step that I have never known Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Very nice. Thank you very much. Um, this next tune I'm going to do acoustically, it's another original. It's called Morning Light. And I um, wrote it in the summertime during the pandemic. And um, I've been doing this whole thing single and alone. And it's just kind of a song about um, like wanting and desire during these crazy pandemic mm -hmm. times.
reminds me of Pink Floyd and the second song reminds me of uh, I don't know the Eagles or the America I don't know somebody else might Love it. It. <laughs> yeah America America I think so yeah anyway beautiful Braden thank you thank you also but it's totally original so it's still it's just Braden but you know that in a most positive way <laughs> you can tell my influences <laughs> Um, okay, uh, Tom Mann, do you want to go next? It's uh, really enjoyable listening to all of you. Uh, I wish the biggest mistake I made in my life was stopping piano lessons in seventh grade. Um, <clears throat> so I spent my career, my work life, uh, in the writing about computers and electronics. And uh, like most people, I backed into what I do for a living. I, I never planned on that. I, I wanted to sing and dance in Broadway musicals, but that, that got foreshortened when I realized I couldn't sing, dance, or, or act, really. Anyway, um, I backed into writing about, I had an offer to write uh, a, tech, a tech book for Univac, uh, a computer company when computers were big mainframes. And uh, I was almost gonna pass on it because I, I was a product of the 60s and the anti-computer uh, sense that computers are gonna bend, fold, spindle and mutilate the student body. But the very week I had to decide to take this job, a book was published called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And it turned out the author lived near me. So I called him one afternoon in uh, April, a beautiful afternoon in April, 1974. And it turned out he wrote the book while working as a tech writer at Univac. And I, I learned a life lesson from that. You do the work you have to do to pay you so you can do the work you really want to do. So I took the gig and Univac was a great teacher. They, opened up the whole company to me. And when, when I'd learned about computers, they said, you need to learn about semiconductors. So they sent me to a brand new startup for a week in the Bay Area called Intel. By the end of the summer of 1974, between Intel and Univac, I had a pretty good layman's understanding of what was about to roll out across the world. 
So I realized, you know, if I'm going to be doing this work, I should probably figure out what electrons are. So I read a few textbooks and just couldn't get it. And then I realized, well, wait a minute. Some of the best double E's in the world are having lunch in the cafeteria down the hall. I may as well go talk to them. So I did. And I started asking questions like, what's an electron? Where do they come from? How do they operate? And, and every time they'd answer a question, I'd ask, why is that? Why is that? Why is that? And finally, they said, you, listen, you need to understand something. We don't really understand electrons ourselves. We just try to make them work to do something functional. And I said, well, who, who would know about electrons? They said, well, you should probably find a physicist. And I said, well, where would I find a physicist? They said, cross the bridge and go to Berkeley. So I did. And I found out there was a place called the Lawrence Berkeley Lab where they had a bunch of physicists working. So I called over there and I got an appointment with a physicist and uh, I went over there on the morning and it's a secure facility. So he had to check me in, but he came down to the secure area and uh, he looked at me and he nodded his head and he said, who are you really? He said, I, I've searched the, the literature and your name doesn't show up anywhere. And yet remarkably you have a contract from a major publisher to do a book on physics. What's your story? I said, oh, that. Well, let me explain. I'm actually doing a story on the computer industry, the electronics industry. But I just have one question, if you could help me. What's that? Well, I said, what's an electron? And with that, he walked over to the phone on the wall. And I thought he was going to call security to have me tossed out. But instead, he called his assistant and said, cancel my morning. So I got a three-hour master class in quantum physics from a world authority. And again, my childish, you say, well, why is that? Why, why is that? Why is that? And he said, look, you've gone as far as we can go. I mean, physicists cannot answer questions about what happened before the Big Bang. That is where the laws of physics break down and we're not permitted to go there. And I said, well, who would have some idea of that? He said, well, theologians or philosophers maybe. I said, where would I find one of those? He said, I have no idea. Well, it turned out in 1983, 1984, there were only about three people in the world dealing with that issue. And it happened by sheer coincidence that one of them was living a mile away at the Berkeley uh, Jesuit house in the Berkeley Hills. And so I discovered this guy after a couple of weeks research and uh, Made a reservation, made an appointment to go and see him. He invited me to come for dinner on Holy Thursday night, 1983. Now, if you're not Christian, Holy Thursday is the night before Jesus Christ was crucified. But our meal wasn't quite that serious. It was actually a very nice dinner. And the Jesuit house in the Berkeley Hills looks out across the bay. And that night, the sun was setting behind the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, it was just a heavenly encounter. So I asked him, uh, you know, he began to tell me about his work, trying to synthesize quantum physics with the idea of the supernatural and the natural. And he said one sentence that struck with me, and he said, perhaps in the interaction, in the interaction between the waves of energy and particles of matter, we find a possibility of the interaction between the spiritual and the physical. And that lit a candle on me and changed the direction of my life, that one sentence. I spent the rest of my life trying to research that. And uh, about 10 years later, I tried to set down such as I'd learned. And in 45 minutes, I wrote an essay, faxed it to the Wall Street Journal. And a week later, they published it on the op-ed page. And from that, it led to a whole other publishing and writing opportunities. And I've posted that paper uh, on Medium. And if you go there, it's listed at tmahon3, tmahon3.medium.com. It's titled The Interaction of Spirituality and Engineering. I hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Great story, Tom. Thank you. Wow. Awesome. Can I, I, I what, what is it, besides the story and the awakening is, 
the fact that you're uh, a newly hired writer at this company and you're getting access to Persig, the author of Zen Motorcycle, and you're all these people are saying, sure, come on over. Is that, is that, was that a, with, in other words, if you were in the exact same uh, career position and asking the same set of questions now, would you be able to get that kind of access or that's very, or is that part of the era and things were more, more kind of freewheeling when, you, when this was going on? Because it's, you're getting remarkable access and generosity uh, without, you know, from these different people, uh, you know, answering your questions and giving you their time. And uh, that's, that's part of what makes it an extraordinary story. Yeah, I never thought of that, but you're, you're probably right. I mean, this was just about the time that in Silicon Valley, you had uh, the homebrew computer, computer club based on sharing information. Uh, nobody had a proprietary interest until a little twerp from Seattle uh, uh, Bill Gates came along and said, no, you can't have my information. It's mine. And the other said, well, screw you. We're going to do the same thing. And that was when the PC revolution became a, a war of intellectual property. But otherwise, in the Valley, in the beginning, was pretty much an offshoot of Haight-Ashbury, that right. everything is shareable. Uh, so you're right that today, probably you couldn't do that at all. But uh... well, you know, Tom, it, it depends. Uh, the the Linux platform, which started as Unix at Bell Labs, right. is is an open source, and those people share. They share everything. You know, they share their knowledge. There's various companies publishing Linux software, Linux operating systems, but it's all open source. The the Linux operating system I use at work was free. They're the odd man out. But, but, but Apple, Apple of all of them is the most proprietary of all of them. Right. But, but Tom gets to call the author of, you got to understand, Zen and the Art of the Motorcycle writing, whatever it's official. Robert Persig? Yeah, was an a, extraordinary smash bestseller. Really oh, yeah. huge. Everybody was reading it, buying it, and talking it. He calls him up gets him on the phone and starts chatting with him. That's pretty uh, extraordinary, given the prominence of this figure. Well, he wasn't prominent. I bought one of the first copies of the book. Okay. So I was the first one to call him. And he, oh, was, oh. he, <laughs> he was tickled that anybody had read his book. So he <laughs> oh, OK. That makes sense. We, we had almost an hour discussion. And oddly enough, he didn't want to talk about the book. He was kind of like a Jehovah's Witness. He kept trying to encourage me to join him on Saturday mornings at 4 a.m. at a Zendo at the University of Minnesota campus. And I didn't want to disappoint him and stay at 4 a.m. on Saturdays. I, I, that would never happen. <laughs> he was, he was a gracious a man. Well, what, also, the ideas you pioneered were later used or later addressed by Fritjof Capra in the book, The Tao of Physics. Uh, and I uh, met Fritjof, but I think it's great that you were trying to do the intersection of physics and spirituality uh, so, uh, and, and, and getting such a big platform. So congratulations. Thanks, yeah, and I, I never met, I've talked to Fritjof, but I, I have met his uh, disciple, Gary Sukov, who wrote a book called The Dancing Wooly Masters, which is much more accessible to lay people. Right, right. I'm, I'm shameless in calling people uh, and saying hi, I'd like to pick your brain. I can do that as a journalist. Hey, thanks, Tom. We're gonna let's go. Um, gets back to the music. And um, Reggie, do you want to go next? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> ah. What's that? Oh. Okay, I'm a little un unprepared. Hold on a second. Make sure we have something assembled. Some Do you want somebody else to go first? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to hold you up. That's right. Go oh. You have somebody else going. I'll make sure I'm tuned up and everything. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Blake, do you want to go next? So I I haven't been practicing. I ran out of songs. I know. So I'm gonna I, I'll, I'll I'll sing something 
next week, I promise. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Redo um, an old song. <laughs> Uh, all of us repeat songs all the time. Yeah. All right. All right. It's, it's, it's I, I your do. choice. Um, hold on. Do you want to think about it and circle back? No, I'm, I'm already. I'm already looking it up. When you said an old song, something immediately came to mind. Shit. <sighs> all right. <clears throat> I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in Volsom prison and time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps moving on down to San Antonio. When I was a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die when i hear that whistle blowing i hang my head and cry well i bet those rich folks eating in a fancy dining car they're probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars well i know i had it coming i know i can't be free but those people keep a moving and that's what tortures me. Well, if they freed me from this prison and that railroad train was mine, I bet I'd move it on a little farther down the line, far from Folsom Prison. That's where I want to stay. And I'd let that lonesome whistle blow my blues away. There you go. You talk about <laughs> One of my favorite Johnny Cash tunes. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. The one that got me started. <laughs> Yay, Blake. He actually, he actually sang that live for inmates at Folsom Prison. I, they, they, I think they appreciated that one. They, they liked the shout out. <laughs> wow. Merle, Merle Haggard was at that show as, a, as an inmate. Well, that's, wow. yeah, that's an interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting backstory. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. Um, thanks, Blake. Uh, Scott, do you want to go next? Um, I want to. Well, I'm. I'm not sure if I want to do originals or covers. Max, are you doing originals or covers? Covers. Just watch. Max, Max is just Depending. his audience. Yeah. Um. I could also do an original and a cover. There you go. Do one of each. All right. Um, I don't think I have anything new for you guys this week. Let's see who I want. What, what am I feeling? Uh, all right, give me like a second to pick something. The issue with having written a lot of songs is you have to pick which one you want to sing. Okay. Um, here, we'll do this one. I haven't played this in forever, so we'll see how it sounds. Um, this is definitely on the more pop side for me. This is called Ordinary Lovers. Um, give this a little sound check. Is that loud enough? Okay. I forgot how this goes. Oh, that's it. I don't know you. You don't need to know my name. Never met you. But it's written on your face that you want to know me better. That you feel the pull I do Like we're the only people In this overcrowded room And all of a sudden the world seems to stop And teachings and visions are floats to the top of my mind And I can't imagine the passionate view you mean my share 
Cause maybe in perfect time We're dancing with each other Or inventing our own paradise Underneath the covers And maybe in some other life That we've not yet discovered We're there walking side by side Like God and heavy lovers Like God and heavy lovers Walk over. I wait for you to make a move, but instead you're looking through me like a stranger's on the street. You just shrug and say, "Excuse me, but my boyfriend wants your seat." And all of a sudden, the world seems to stop and take dream visions. I float to the top of my mind and dissolve into nothing because you're loving someone else. But maybe another time. We're dancing with each other Or inventing our own paradise Underneath the covers And maybe in some other life That we've not yet discovered We're there walking side by side Like God and every lovers Like God and every lovers Two hard and every lovers We could be ordinary lovers. Now you're leaving. I can't stand to watch you go. I shouldn't come back to this place I know I'll only dance alone But still I end up back here Like a tape stuck on repeat Hoping I might see your face again And you'll finally see me And maybe in another life we we'll dance with each other Or invented our own paradise Underneath the covers And maybe in some other time That we never discovered We were walking side by side Like God and every lover Like God and every lover Two hard and every lover Just think we discovered That was really good. Thank you. Okay. Um, cover. Estrella, am I correct that you are a native Spanish speaker? Uh, <laughs> possibly. Why? <laughs> good. Judge me. Oh, I, I mean that like in a constructive way. <laughs> oh. Spanish. Like judge you in Spanish? Like... What? what? <laughs> Judge my pronunciation. <laughs> oh, your pronunciation. I'm not native Spanish, but I'm like fluent. <laughs> okay, then I would bet your pronunciation's better than mine. Uh, depends. All right. Um, this one is called Carnaval. It's by a guy named Maluma. And, uh, Maluma? Okay, I know Maluma. I don't know the song, though. <laughs> basically, the it's a very positive, uplifting song. This is based on an acoustic version I heard because like the original version is this very kind of cliche sounding party bump track, but the acoustic version strips it down and makes it a little more meaningful. But the chorus okay. means you don't have to um, suffer. You don't have to cry. You only have one life and it's a carnival.
Okay, go for it. Si te hace falta que te quiera, yo te amo a mi manera, yo lo haré. Y basta, mi niña, ya no llores, olvida los temores y abrazame. Seré tu ángel y tu mejor compañía, con más fuerte en mi mano. Te enseñaré a volar, ya no habrá más temores. Vendrán tiempos mejores, levanta ya tu mano, que vinimos a gozar. No hay que sufrir, no hay que llorar, la vida es una y es un carnaval. No malo se quiera, todo pasará, la vida es una y es un carnaval. No hay que sufrir, no hay que llorar, la vida es una y es un carnaval. No malo se quiera, todo pasará, la vida es una. Oye. Pa' que llora mamacita, si así no seré tan bonita que déjeme probar ese boquita y ahora ese coro que que vamos donde tú quieras que al fin y al cabo vas a pasarla bien. El destino final de esta parisita no vas a querer volver. Báilame, báilame, que las quedas se van bailando mujer, siente el ritmo y mueve los pies. Ven conmigo contra otra vez. No hay que sufrir, no hay que llorar. La vida es una y es un carnaval. No malo se irá, todo pasará. La vida es una y es un carnaval. No hay que sufrir, no hay que llorar. La vida es una y es un carnaval. No malo se irá, todo pasará. La vida es una y es un carnaval. Wow. Wow. That was actually very, very good. And your pronunciation was almost perfect. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Muy bien. Gracias. Well done. Wow. Very impressive. That, Beautiful. That, the rap section is always a 50-50 as to whether I stumble <laughs> over it or not. I got through it today. Mm -hmm. Scott, you said that was a cover? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll throw a link to the um, acoustic version in the chat. All right, thanks, y'all. Who is the original performer or writer? Um, his name is Maluma, M-A-L-U-M-A. -M -A. And where is he from? That is a good question. Was this released in America or how did you learn, how did you run across it? Um, so he is from Colombia and way back when in, I want to say May, when they had like that one world to get at home concert thing, that's where I saw this acoustic version. I was like, yeah, that was actually pretty good. So I learned the song. That's pretty good. Since I have a decent Decent knowledge of Spanish, I like to think. When you, can I ask, when you learn a song, are you able to learn by ear or you find sheet music? Or no, I learn by ear. But but also I think part of what, what helps me be able to put the emotion into this song is that I know what the words mean. Um, thank you, sure. I did not see that comment, but thank you. Uh, here's the link to um, uh, acoustic, that word. Thanks, Scott. Um, Reggie, do you want to, are you ready to go? I guess You're on. you don't want to be muted if I'm going to go, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. I've been trying to, um, uh, yeah. Mm, whatever. Finish up this things that I've been, so I've been, I'm going to give it a try. Uh, I'm going to make up a introduction. Okay, so this is an original.
not simply push love through. Reality is not that easily fooled. So just remember what they say is true. The one you love doesn't always love you. nice chord progression uh, yeah thanks <laughs> and for coming from you people that actually know what chords i might be playing that's that's really important <laughs> <laughs> i did play this from my songwriters group at one point and just just to ask them i said okay so does this make any sense what i'm playing because i just went by ear messing around with stuff <laughs> so, okay so I hear something's going weird with my amp or whatever. So I think there's a song called The One You Love, so I, I have to come up with a title for that too. I'll do some, okay. So I will do something bluesy, I think, just to keep it um, in my wheelhouse. Oh, heck, I'm going to do this thing I did the other night. Um, I just did last night. Okay, so this actually ends up being another original. The sun is rising. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. Um, Estrella, uh, do you want to sing something? You're on mute. You're muted. That was awkward. Hi. Hi. <laughs> sure. Let me just find one real quick. Um, hold on. Oh, that was loud. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to be singing Put Your Records On by um, Corrine bailey A. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. So let's just hope that this doesn't sound terrible. I was correct, by the way. Now I can judge your pronunciation for like three words. But that was correct. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Well, that was bad. Okay. Three little birds sat on my window and they told me I don't need to worry. Summer came I said, man, so sweet. Little girls double dutch on the concrete. Maybe sometimes we got it wrong. Hands on the Nothing seems to change It'll always stay the same Don't you hesitate Girl, put your records on Tell me your favorite song You'll go ahead and your hands on Say if I can fade a cheese, I won't forget your dreams. You'll go ahead and you'll hold on. You're gonna find yourself somewhere, somehow. Blue as a sky, somber and lonely. Sipping tea in a bar by the roadside. Don't let them other boys fool you. Gotta love that Afro hair too. Maybe sometimes you pray, but heads are high. The more you stay the same, the more they seem to change. Don't you think that it's strange? Girl, put your records on. Tell me your favorite song. You'll go ahead and your hat on. Say if I can fade a jeans. I hope you get your dreams. You'll go ahead and your hat on. You're gonna find yourself somewhere. Somehow, more than I can take, pity for pity's sake, some nights I kept me away. I don't know that I was part. When you're gonna realize that you don't even have to try, don't what you want to, oh, babe. Gotta put your record on, tell me your favorite song. Go oh, and let your hands out. Say if I can fade a cheese, I hope you get your dreams. Just go ahead, lay your hands out. Girl, put your record on. Tell me your favorite song. You go ahead, let your hands out. Say if I can fade a cheese, I hope you get your dreams. Just go ahead, lay your hands out. You're gonna find yourself somewhere, somehow. 
kind of guessed on that one part because I didn't know how it went. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Oh. Hey. Oh. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> who, who is the song? Is that yours or a cover? Oh, and... no, I wish. No, it's a uh, Corrine Bailey Ray. Oh, very good singer, and so are you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll turn off my video now. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, Ed. Oh, it's tough to, find, uh, to follow that up. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It's gracious. Better you, better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, you can yodel, right? I'm not no yodeling, no yodeling tonight. No. I want to set the dog off. All right, I'm gonna do a couple of love songs. First song is a song by Little Walter uh, called "Mean Old World," and this is uh, what happens when you realize that the woman you love has found somebody else, which uh, tragically is the story of my life until I found my my loving wife that I have now. And despite my own behavior, she she hasn't. I haven't found the need to leave. She hasn't found the need to kick me out yet. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> This is a main old world Try living by yourself This is a main old world Try living by yourself Can't be with the one you're loving have to use somebody else and I got the blues Gonna pack my bags and go Yeah, I got the blues Gonna have to pack my things and go Mr. So-and-so So that's the story of that, that cat's love life right there. The girl you love is out with Mr. So-and-so. And um, since you didn't kick me out last week for playing my ukulele, I decided I'd bring my ukulele right. back. And uh, I've been working on this song 
this is this is an original. And there's another love song. Uh, but this is on the other, the shoe's on the other foot on this one because uh, this is all about what happens when you make up your mind that uh, it's time to, to fish or cut bait. You're down on your knees Begging daddy please Just singing the same old song The baby you've been singing For way too long So I made up my mind Yes I did baby I made up my mind Yes, I did, baby. I made up my mind to stop loving you. You're begging, please. Baby, daddy, please. You're singing the same old song. The baby you've been singing for way too long That's why I'm, I made up my mind I made up my mind I made up my mind To stop loving you To stop Loving you. Something like that. Work in progress. Work in progress. Very nice. Um, Wendell, I mean, Warren. Warren, are you ready to go? Yeah, sure. Great. Okay. Um, this one is, uh, is my favorite song of mine lyrically, uh, cause it's, uh, I don't know, the, uh, it's one of the few songs I write that's a story about someone else that's really truly a ballad and not just, uh, not just some, uh, depressed weird ramblings. So, uh, uh, this one's called An Outlaw Always Comes Home.
I finished a little bit more recently. Uh, this one's called uh, Wings of Wax.
Beautiful, Warren. Thank you. So I think everybody's gone. So um, thanks, everybody, for another great open mic night live at the Zoom Bar DC. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Reggie. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Thank Blake. Thank you for hosting. Thanks for your hosting. You're yeah, thanks for hosting. Good to see everybody. Thanks, Braden. Thanks, Estrella. Hope to see, see you next week. Be safe and well. Bye, everybody. Everybody Bye. sounds good. Bye, everybody. Thank good you. One, good night, night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Art. Thanks, Max. Thanks, Marsha. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs>